Why have I started to buy so many Makita battery tools? Everyone knows I've had Milwaukee for a long time now. So I just wanted to discuss the pros and cons between Milwaukee and Makita tools and the reasoning for why I have chosen the tools I have. So despite what people think, Makita was actually my first large kit I bought. It was a five piece kit when I first turned tradesman, roughly 11 years ago. This is actually from the original kit, still going. It's a brush drill plus the impact driver. But then a few years later, all my gear got stolen. That's when I bought my first Milwaukee kit. These two drills are from that original kit. Still going strong. And so let's run through why I went Milwaukee at that stage. So the company I worked for had just spent roughly $50,000 on battery tools, which was fantastic. All Milwaukee, brand new batteries, hammer drills, you name it, they bought it. And for anyone that knows working on site with other people, you know it's a lot easier when everyone's on the same platform. You can borrow charges, batteries, and tools. And at the time, they'd just come out with their M12 gear and they were really pushing that. And if you didn't know, it sort of caters to the electricians and plumbers. And that really did seem like the demographic that Milwaukee was pushing for at the time with the tools they're bringing out. So for myself, I wasn't really comparing power, torque, all those sort of things that a lot of people sort of look at when they're looking at new tools. I was just looking at the functionality. It was just a lot easier for me to utilize the tools and batteries that everyone else had. And the overall range of what the brand was providing was what I was mainly looking at. But we're now roughly seven years on, and obviously I've started buying a lot more tools. I've bought the miter saw, finally got a track saw, the reciprocating saw, grinder, battery vacuum cleaner, rear handle circular saw, and the Makita planer. All of it is the 40 volt XGT. And let's go through why I went to Makita for these certain tools. So let's start off with the miter saw, almost exactly the same as the Milwaukee, same features and same function. So just looking at the miter saws themselves, it was quite difficult to make up a decision. Obviously I'm already on Milwaukee, so you would think I would go to the Milwaukee, but reason number one was the batteries. So this is very anecdotal, but I've also talked to a lot of other people that have the same problems. And I'm not saying that this doesn't happen with all the other platforms, but I bought a 12 amper and a eight amper and both of them within a couple of months would not charge fully. They would get to two or three bars, say that it's charged and then that was it. And when I throw it on any equipment, especially my gardening equipment, which is why I bought the larger batteries, they would die super quick. I obviously did get an exchange, which was fine. It took roughly a month, I think four to five weeks for it to get replaced. So that was all good. And this one's running strong at the moment. It's on three bars, but it is charging fully. But when running with your larger tools, like your miter saws and your vacuums, I wanna be able to throw a battery on there that's going to last a while, not have to change them over and over. So I figured I would go over to the 40 volt range, the XGT, and give that a go. This is just a four amp hour battery, and they have been going really well on the miter saw and the vacuum. And in the future, I do think I'll go with the larger amp hour battery for the XGT range. The next reason to go to the Makita with the miter saw was the extraction. I wanted a vacuum cleaner that ran off the batteries and also had the AWS system. So this is a Bluetooth system. And when that's connected to any of your saws, so this one's connected at the moment, that comes on when you pull the trigger. You've also got it on the rear handle saw, got it on the planer and also the track saw. And yes, I do know that Milwaukee has their new range of vacuums, but, they don't have Bluetooth, they don't have the AWS system, and they have to have two batteries. So that means you can't just run it off the one 18 volt, you need the 36 volts to run them. While the 40 volt system does take two batteries, you don't have to utilize two batteries. So at the moment, I'm only running off the one. And then obviously, we don't have those new vacuums in Australia. I don't know when they're gonna be released, but I needed them now. And so far with all of those tools with the AWS system and the vacuum, the cleanup has been absolutely fantastic. Literally almost no cleanup, even with the planer. I've done a lot of planing and the cleanup has been minimal. So hats off to Makita for their extraction system on their tools. And we can start talking about the track saw. That is one that I really wanted to pick up. I was gonna get a table saw, but figured I would get the track saw instead and see if I could utilize that and not have to buy the table saw. So, so far it's been all right, but obviously we're still waiting on the Milwaukee track saw. I do know it's been released in the US now. Don't know too many people that have it, but it's gonna be ages till it comes out here in Australia and I needed it to do this renovation. And realistically, the reviews of this track saw have been phenomenal. I put it up against the Festool reviews and pretty much everyone was putting them up against each other. And if you know Festool, 
you know that it's pretty good gear and everyone raves on about it, especially for their uh, track saw and their miter saw. So if I'm gonna jump onto another platform, I think Makita was probably the way to go with those other tools and also get the track saw. And even then with the Milwaukee track saw, I didn't see too many features that really stood out as any better. It didn't have the Bluetooth, so it doesn't have the AWS extraction. And realistically, that was what I was after. So then we look at the planer. That was another one on the list that I wanted to grab. And pretty much everyone that I talked to wasn't a big fan of the Milwaukee one, unfortunately. It's not a bad tool, but the depth of cut isn't as good as the Makita. So the Milwaukee can remove up to two mil, whereas the Makita can remove four mil. Plus it has the AWS. Once again, that extraction system. Although I should say that the Makita is $115 more expensive. So then we can talk about the rear handle circular saw. And that's a pretty easy one. Milwaukee's taken that off the shelves in Australia. So yeah. So both platforms are phenomenal when it comes to certain tools. They do certain things right in their own fields, but I do think that Milwaukee is more allocated to electricians and plumbers, that sort of style of work, whereas the Makita is for your carpentry style work. And if you're someone that's trying to figure out which brand to go with for your style of work, I really do think those are the sort of things I would look at is Overall, what is the work that you're doing? What tools do you need to utilize the most? And which brands are catering for that style of work? And for instance, if you're just gonna use two drills and a grinder, any platform is gonna be pretty much fine. And I would almost go for what the best deal is at the time. Although I do believe the higher amp hour battery problem with Milwaukee is definitely something that has scared me away from a lot of the larger products. And I do need to say that all their other smaller batteries, the fours, the fives, the six, they've all lasted on me. I still have the original batteries that I bought in that first kit. I've only ever had one battery die on me from those smaller batteries. And I think if Milwaukee did change that and the vacuum system, I would almost stay on Milwaukee.